My favorite filming hack that I utilized on this adventure film shoot, which was an absolute game changer, was if you're filming anything with aviation headsets or radios, take a basic lav mic and put the microphone inside the ear cup and it will naturally pick up all the sounds that you're recording in the cockpit and just run the lav mic straight into your camera and it's gonna get awesome cockpit audio, which is gonna help level up your edit if you wanna use any of those audio moments. <laughs> hate your job, I bet it. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yo, friend, I shot a short film and adventure documentary while living out of a tent on top of a mountain, filming some of my favorite humans do some incredible things. We had zero budget for filming and immediately after uploading, I got a bunch of great questions about all things to do with the production. So we're gonna dive into that. We're gonna cover quite a few topics. You can follow the chapter markers down below. If there's a specific section you're most interested in. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you've actually seen the short film already. <laughs> the downside of filming on a mountain is you need to take up all the stuff with you up there. And especially when you're filming, that can be very challenging for your personal camping gear, your personal food, and then also equipment to make a, a video while you're up there. That is that is a lot to look after as a solo filmer. So let's just talk about the camera size. So I personally was allocated 150 pounds, which was more than uh, most people coming on the trip because I was gonna film it. So I had to keep all of my gear under 150 pounds, but I was actually more limited by volume as well. So we had to be able to fit it inside of the helicopter. So this experience of packing all of my stuff into a bag, my own camping gear and everything that I needed to actually stay up there on the mountain, my clothes, everything, uh, has caused me to kind of change my opinion a little bit. Before, I did not care about the ultra light lightweight camping gear. I had a tent that was about this big. I had a big sleeping bag. And what I realized was the ultra light stuff, not only does it save you weight, but it saves you volume. So if I had, I basically ran out of volume space before I ran out of my weight limit. So I got a video linked up on the card that will show you my lighter weight camping gear I've been adapting to because I have now realized that the investment into smaller gear does pay itself forward, even if you're running a 50 pound plus bag to begin with anyways. So lighter, smaller is better. Let's talk about cameras. I shot the entire piece on a GH5 with two lenses. I've got my GH5 kit. That's gonna be my main shooting kit with this uh, small rig stuff I've been testing. And yeah, I'm basically just taking the 12 to 35 and this 35 to 100. Amazing two lenses. And with the GH5, I can get away with doing a whole film with just those two lenses. So that's the plan. It's such a capable camera. And in a lot of ways, I attribute the style that I've developed in my work to what this camera has allowed me to do. And the big factor of that is the in-body stabilization has really just let me run forward and do story-focused shooting. Because the batteries last so long and because it's so easy to turn on and manage as a solo shooter, you can get a lot of content and not have to worry about running out of battery, running out of memory card size because the files are pretty small. Some of these shots, knowing that they were handheld, is just uh, ridiculously impressive to me. And it's even more encouraging knowing that this was shot five years ago and it looked that good then. And so even when I think about filming things now, it is helpful to just remember, if you know the limitations of a tool, you can really just take it up to the edge of what you wanna use it with. And with this piece, I just used two zoom lenses and acknowledged shallow depth of field isn't gonna make this interesting. What's gonna make it interesting is the way the shots are framed who's in that shot and what they're doing. Okay, let's quickly talk about some rapid fire filmmaking accessories that I find really helpful. The first one is this multi-pronged USB cable. So it's got USB type C, micro USB and lightning all in one cable. But what I like the most about it is that it can charge all three of those at once simultaneously from one USB A port. So this is really helpful when you're charging things overnight in your tent and you don't have lots of charging ports available. I use small portable power banks all the time and i also like running a small usb solar panel for charging the power banks throughout the day and i also like using this little usb adapter that shows me how much power is coming out of the panel so i get a good sense if i'm getting a good yield from the sun wherever i have it set up i still love the grippy side handle but i've ditched the wooden handle on the right hand side it looked and felt really cool but it didn't add enough function for the weight 
I've also started using a monitor for basically everything, especially because it helps me pull focus and get images I like in really bright scenarios. And yes, I still absolutely love bucket hats for filming. The brim flips up when you put the EVF to your face, especially with the microphone on. I love this. And staying protected from the sun is really important in the Alpine. I really like bucket hats. And uh, you can just be a proper adventure filmmaker dude. I still use cages all the time. Uh, these are especially helpful in aggressive environments like rope access camera work where you've got it slinging and hanging around your neck while you're moving around on rock uh, because if your camera bangs into it, it's just another layer of protection. I still use small rig stuff, but now I would make sure to get a version of the cage that has an Arcus Swiss plate built into the bottom. This is the new thing they've been doing. I absolutely love it. It's not on every one of their cages, so look for the ones that have the Arcus Swiss plate. So now you no longer need tripod plates for anything. You can attach it to a tripod or a gimbal. I'm showing my Sony setup here because this is now the camera that I use for everything. I've also started using these cotton carry camera clips. I use this over the Peak Design clip because it just feels more sturdy and robust and flexible. And I really like being able to just put my camera on my bag when I'm going around hiking. And as I was saying, I basically use a monitor for all my dock stuff now. And I'm using these adapters that my buddy Caleb just showed me. And they they're just awesome. The reason why I like them is that they're quick release on both sides. So you can decide if you want to remove the monitor and attach something else or remove the monitor with the mount. So this makes it very helpful for just pulling your monitor off, putting it in a bag, taking it back out, and it just leaves your camera nice and clean without leaving the monitor mount there or needing to deal with NATO rails and things like that. And of course, another massive improvement to my life is the development of the Shimoda Action X series. So I'm wearing the X50 here, the 50 liter and the Action X70. These two bags are just my all time favorite. I got to help prototype test them. I'm a massive fan of Shimoda. I'm on their pro team. I've done several videos about the bags, but honestly, if there's a better option out there, I would be using it. And to me, these are the ultimate adventure camera bags. Now, something that I'm incredibly excited about that I need to do a whole video on, and I'm gonna talk about interview sound later, but I now have a better, smaller, portable interview lighting kit. I'm just so thrilled about this. So I've got an ultra small light stand. I use the defuse box, I use the light panel, and this setup for me, I've been able to get some incredible looking results with. So I need to do a dedicated video for now. I've got the links for it in the description. But if you have any questions about what I should talk about with a portable interview setup like this, let me know because I'm just, I'm over the moon thrilled with this. I'm very excited. The other camera that I also brought with me was an A7S, the original model. So you might not remember, but that only shot in 1080p. It was line skipped and it, it wasn't a very good image. That was the camera I had before a GH5. So I brought that camera to do nighttime time lapses because it's still a nice big sensor. And I had a 18 millimeter vintage lens on it. So it works well because there's no aperture blade flickering for time lapses. So let's actually talk about radios real quick because I want to continue that audio tip. So I think every adventure production needs radios. These are from Amazon, incredibly cheap. Uh, they work really, really well. The distance is incredible. Where there's a lot of radio chatter happening and you want to record that and use those sound bites for your adventure film, because I do think that levels it up a little bit, take an audio recorder, tape it near a radio. So, or just use an elastic, just put it near it and then put it in like a, a toque or a hat and put it inside of a backpack somewhere. That can be very helpful for later if you're trying to pull out these little authentic sound bites that are happening on the radios. It will sound that nice radio sound because it's all coming through a radio itself and you've got a clean track that's not messed up with wind or uh, other people around the person on the radio talking. If you found that little mic in the ear cup trick helpful, I've realized that I want to share more tips like that because I've got a lot more. So I created 30 days of daily tip videos that you can get emailed for free. They're coming out in July. So make sure you go sign up for that because it's going to be daily tips and tricks for all things adventure filmmaking, little life hacks for making things easier. It's also going to be things about making money with video and lessons that I've learned from that. All just quick bite-sized nuggets in your inbox. So if you want something helpful like that in your inbox, uh, you can find the link down in the description. For drone filmmaking, I still used my trusty Phantom 4 Pro. This came in absolutely clutch. It's a nice larger sensor. ND filters on it are an absolute must. I used some of the polarized ones from Polar Pro and those allowed me to get the really cool lake shots without the glare. How do we charge all the batteries up there? That was uh, that was the big question uh, for myself before the shoot because managing battery life is hard. Uh, for starters, I was offloading my media every day, especially offloading it from the drone or swapping the micro SD card in the drone between flights. This is important because if you ever crash the drone and you can't recover it, you want, if you have all the footage you shot from the production up to that point on the drone, when you crash it, if that does happen, 
you might lose it all. And thankfully I haven't crashed a drone like that, but I, I've come close to being fearful of not getting the drone back. And so that's where I've realized investing in several smaller sized micro SD cards. I store all of my cards inside of a pouch like this as I'm filming. And the ones that I'm done filming with, I put in the import do not use. So that way it's super clear to me, all the ones up here are ready to go. So I cycle micro SD cards throughout the day in the drone when awesome stuff happens. So that way it's kind of like a self backup. So an important part of my daily workflow was in the evening doing a gear detail, taking everything out at the tent, looking over all my equipment, managing it with the audio stuff. There are some important things there, uh, blowing off my lenses, just trying to keep my gear in good working order because things can get pretty chaotic multi-day on your fifth day in, your seventh day in, things can get a little chaotic. For charging, uh, this was where I invested the most money actually on this shoot. I spent over $2,000 on a gas generator, and I thought that this was gonna be the absolute ticket. It's really, it's really hard going into a project like this to know what's gonna go wrong. Uh, so far, most things technically wise from the filming perspective have been going really well, except the generator, which I brought up here, which I just purchased specifically for this trip and for future trips, has not been running smoothly at all. And I'm like really relying on that for power uh, so that's been a struggle <laughs> and it's been hard to uh, hard to focus knowing that the generator is not working very well and it's, it just keeps shutting off. So I need that to be charging my batteries while I'm up here. And uh, that's where I thought it was really appropriate to do an anchor sponsorship in this video because a portable battery bank to me is absolutely ideal for this situation. And Anchor has a lot of power solutions in various sizes. Their powerhouse would be amazing for a product like that. And the reason for this is that you don't have to turn it on like a generator and be stressed about running out of fuel across multiple days. Uh, you just plug in a device and it will really efficiently use the power stored inside of it to charge that device. Just by having it on, you're not burning all this extra power, all this extra gasoline. You've got stored energy ready to use optimally for every electronic that you want to charge. Not only does the biggest size powerhouse have incredible capacity, but it also has tons of ports on the front. This vastly simplifies all the extra cables and adapters that I need to bring up there and having those USB ports on the front is so stinking helpful. I've been using the powerhouse on my adventure productions now. They have different size models that will suit your needs. And here's the cool part. You could charge it with solar in a mountain environment. And that means if it's sunny out, you can just be saving free power to be using. And it's not going to be a loud generator up in this beautiful environment where you're going to run out of, of gasoline or something like that. And boy, do I just wish that I had brought up solar to be able to use on this project because it would have made it a whole lot less stressful for me. And I'm not going to do it that way again. And one of the cool parts that I really appreciate about the powerhouse is that it charges ridiculously fast which is a really quick charge rate for how much power is stored in that so that means if you drain it all the way down you can get power back into it to use really quickly and that's a really big win i recommend checking out the link in the description to learn more about the powerhouse uh, i really like the anchor products i've been using their really small portable usb power banks for years i really like their stuff the fact that they're making these larger more robust fully capable units has me really happy and i think you'll be really impressed with what they have available but sound, let's talk about it. First off, you absolutely want a furry win windscreen for whatever mic that you're gonna use for an on-camera shotgun. The furry mics work far better in windy environments. And even in windy environments, sometimes they're pushing right up against the limit when a helicopter is taken off or something like that. 80% of the audio that you hear in this film, the interviews, is just a shotgun mic like this, a powered on-camera shotgun mic plugged into my camera. Within, within, arms, within arms distance of the subject matter that I'm filming. That means on this camera, I was filming at about 12 millimeters, which is around 24 millimeters on full frame. And that distance is really what allows me to get the full bodied sound because the further distance your mic is away, the more tinny the vocals are gonna sound. So what I attempted to do was I ran a, an even better shotgun mic on top of the camera. And I had this funky rig going where I had a wireless mic pack in between into the camera. So on one channel, I had a wireless lav mic and then I had the shotgun mic in. Uh, yes, this larger mic is better quality, but running this module on top of my camera ended up making my rig quite big and I actually missed moments. So there's a couple times where just like getting things out and set up, if it was put away a little bit, I missed some, some key moments. Uh, so that was one of the reasons I went back to just the on-camera simple setup that's just ready to go at all times. 
But the other downside was using wireless labs. I have just not had good success with that when when I'm a solo shooter. <laughs> it is, I, I've had like the little AA batteries, they die. There's a lot more things to manage. Multiple things have to be turned on. Clipping audio, you want to be actively monitoring if someone goes out of the range of distance. And that's what I had happen multiple times on this because of the rock formation on the top. I lost distance. So I've completely changed and made a lot of upgrades on my kit and my whole interview setup. And let's talk about that. This is my new lav kit boom like this. So yes, I still heavily rely on an on-camera microphone, but now I use 32-bit float audio recorders on person. I'm a huge fan of using little recorders and I've been using that for years, even before I got wireless stuff. And I've gotten back to it because 32-bit float audio basically is like raw audio. It is so powerful. You don't need to set the gain level. It just records the best that it can. And so it sounds amazing later when you need to boost up the vocals on a lav mic, it sounds nice and full and it's not, it doesn't have all the signal noise. And then if a helicopter comes and lands, it doesn't peak out the audio. It seriously seems like complete magic. And these little recorders are so tiny. They charge via USB-C, which I appreciate actually because all those extra AA batteries on the mountain are very stressful to deal with. Getting a little recorder like this, this is the Tracky from Tentacle Sync, uh, absolutely has changed the way that I can do lav mic on location. The feature that I also really like about them, and this is really cool with the Tentacles, is they have a transmit module, which will put out an audio timecode track to your camera itself. So what I do now is I use an audio split cable to do two sound input sources, the shotgun mic and the audio timecode track, splits it to right and left, record it into camera. And what that allows you to do, to do later is sync up with audio timecode instantly and pairs all those clips in Final Cut Pro 10 with the sync utility. It just immediately makes it as if those audio clips recorded with the little recorder were actually recorded into the camera. And if you have multiple of these recorders going on, they will all be there as audio channels like you might be used to with a C200 with multiple inputs. It's all just there, expand down. So what I do now is I put these all over the place. I put them on people when they're hiking. I get all my ambient sound. I'm quite excited about this because it's, so it's so helpful in editing, but I can just pick and choose all those audio moments that are attached to video files immediately. And this means wireless range is no longer an in issue. Wireless interference is no longer an issue. And in those situations where let's say someone is out on a high line and they're so far away that if you tried to do an audio sync, because there's really powerful audio sync tools where it will just match up waveforms and work really well. But if someone's way across on a different cliff, you're not going to get those synced up. Of course, the best case scenario is to have a dedicated sound person with a recorder, making sure audio levels are amazing. Uh, but uh, it's just me out there filming a lot of the time. So I'm quite pleased with moving over to this setup, but 32-bit flow audio has changed things forever for me. I'm very, very grateful. We already talked for way too long. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.